All right, so let's go in. I'm just going to sort this by, I'll sort it first by uh, date. And then I'm going to sort by uh, the, well, let's sort by the detail first. I'll sort by the detail and then I'm going to sort by the amount so I can get my deposits basically on top and that'll categorize it so I can see the deposits on top and then I can see the groupings that are kind of like the secondary sorting uh, in order. So if I wanted to add multiple things at one time, then I'm more likely to be able to do so. Now I'm going to go down here to the Amazon items and this is just an example. We'll try to dig more into these when we get into rules a little bit later, but you might get like one uh, customer that pays you multiple different kinds of income. And if that's the case, then we might want to differentiate uh, then the income accounts that they're going to be going to, which can be a little bit tricky because if you only have one customer, then how are you going to set up a rule to differentiate the type of income? The same thing could happen on the vendor side of things on cash outflows. So oftentimes if it's an electronic transfer, even though like this one and this one, are still from Amazon. I don't, I'm not even sure what they're for here, but I'm just gonna make up what they're for, right? Even though they're both from Amazon, I could say, well, uh, maybe I want this one to be differentiated, go into another income account. And so that's, and, and, and so we can do that oftentimes, even though it's actually the same vendor because the detail in the bank feeds will have differentiation, if not in the name, sometimes in the number and this kind of jargon over here, you gotta be careful because maybe it just, it might be just a numbering thing uh, for the number of the transaction. But sometimes in this bank feed jargon, there's something that you can use to differentiate that might be useful for you to categorize your items possibly to a different location. For example, if you're tracking by location or department or something like that, if it was being mailed to a different location, but it's for it was like the same kind of income or something, and you wanna track by location, you might be able to set a rule that would distinguish it based on the on this bank feed detail. That's why you want the detail rather than just the description that QuickBooks will kind of extract uh, from it. All right, so let's take a look at uh, one on 229. Let's, let's just take a look at, I'll use this one for an example. So it's gonna be a category. And then now we've got a customer. Now the question is, if I'm gonna distinguish different Amazon items, what should I be including as the customer name? I might want to differentiate if I'm going to have a different customer like this one down here or one of these up top that have a, a bit different of a name. I might want to distinguish those by having different vendors, even though they're basically coming from the same vendor, because that will allow us to search it at the detail. This is a customer, not a vendor. They'll have that'll allow us to go into the customer detail possibly and sort the information by a different customer or you could just keep the same customer as just generically Amazon and still be able to distinguish the transactions based on the bank feed memo. So you have a couple different options. I'm gonna make like a different vendor for each one. So this one I'm gonna call, let's call the whole thing amazon.com incorporated. I'm gonna say that's gonna be a new customer. I'm sorry if I keep saying vendor, switching to the customer side because it's, it's a deposit and I'm gonna save it. And then the category, I'm going to add a new category to it as we go. And it's going to be an income type of account. So I'm going to say it's going to be an income account. And let's say it's a standard income. I'm just going to call it other primary income. And I'm just going to call it Amazon. Let's say this came from Amazon Prime. Like they're giving us money for, for videos or something that we uploaded to Amazon movies we uploaded or something. So I'm just making that up. So we're going to say, there it is. And let's uh, save it. And then we could, of course, make a rule based on that, trying to distinguish the amazon.com from the other Amazon type of things in the rule, if that's the way we want to do it. Or we can make it more of a general rule if we wanted it to include all the other Amazon items. So if I want to make it generic to include everything, I can, I can do that by just calling it Amazon or I can use to one of these distinguishing factors to make a more specific rule so I can differentiate between them. So let's make the rule down below just like we did before. And I'm going to try to distinguish the rule by saying that I want to go to the memo possibly and pick up part of the item that's going to be differentiating it. So I'm going to name the rule that and then I'm going to say it's a money in rule, of course. And I could say all or any transaction. I like going to the bank text, which might be necessary if we need to pull in some of that, that added detail, like in the memo area. 
instead of just like the description where YouTube, where I mean, where the QuickBooks might truncate it. And then I'm gonna say contains, and then this is where I can make it more general or more broad. So I wanna make sure to add the .com in, in it because that .com is gonna be a distinguishing factor from some of the other Amazon items. So I'm just gonna say, okay, it's gonna include the amazon.com or maybe I should go down to the, I'm, I'm gonna add this whole thing in the bank memo. This whole thing right there. And, and so now, so now that happened to be in the text to have a distinguishing factor. But if there was a distinguishing factor in the number, then of course I can go on to the number to try to distinguish it from other items from the same uh, customer. Or if I was dealing with a vendor, same kind of items. Then of course I can add another rule if I wanted to apply another rule to it. We can test the rule here. And it says that five are currently uh, are, are, in, are in there. So this rule will apply to five of the items. That's good. So deposit, that looks good, that looks good. I'm not gonna apply it automatically, so I'm gonna save it. And then something's not quite right. So I'm gonna get rid of a comma in the rule name and that should do it. All right, so then I can scroll up and I can sort now by the ones that are recognized. So I can recognize 11 of them and the Amazon items have been picked up. So here we have them. Now notice it just picked up the ones with amazon.com. We had some other Amazon ones. I'm just gonna try to add all of them. So I'm gonna put my cursor on this first one. I'm holding down control and I'm gonna go down to this one. And then let's accept all of those, pulling those over into our financials. So I'm gonna accept those, go to my balance sheet, see what happened to it. I'm gonna run it. And then if I go into my checking account, now I should have more deposits. So it might be useful to me to go up top and customize this, possibly filtering now by transaction type, which is quite common. I'm gonna filter by the deposits. If I can find them, donde esta running it. Okay, so there we have our deposits. There's our Amazon uh, deposits that have been made there. So that looks good. If I go into it, it takes us into, of course, a deposit type of form. That looks good. And so I'm gonna close this back out and scroll on back up. So it doesn't take us to the bank fees. It takes us to the deposit form, to the income statement. And, and now if I refresh it, running it to refresh it, then now we have this Amazon Prime. We named it by the customer because I don't have the luxury of the sub ledger to, to break out the customer because I've entered these as revenue with a deposit form instead of a sales receipt or uh, other uh, a sales receipt or invoice form. So there it is, there's the deposit form. The income statement is being created. Now we've added the income uh, line or customer. So I can go back over here and right click and duplicate this tab. I'm gonna pull it to the right. And then I could, could go down and find my customers which are in the sales area, in the sales tab on the left. And there's my customer information. So we've got uh, the customer in place, but there's not gonna be a lot of detail in it because we're not using the normal forms used, which would usually be an invoice sales receipt and receive payment type of form. But at least we've got a little bit more information that we're listing the customer in the transactions, which we can see when we see the transactions, you know, go into the actual transactions uh, and the detail of those transactions in here and the name. And that could give us a little bit more sorting detail to sort our data. So it's not, we lose a little bit of the data by not using the full service accounting system with those sub reports, but again, it's probably worth our time to do so because it's faster, it's way faster to do it this way, of course. So now I'm gonna 